We are now going to look at two other types of problems. They do not involve area. They just involve finding a special number. In the first problem, we have a number that is 56 less than its square. Can you find that number? Now, I'm sure you might could find it by guessing, but we're learning algebra today. So let's learn to write an equation. Find a number, let's use n, that is, that's our equal marks, 56 less than its square. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. A lot of people want to put 56 subtract x or n squared. But less than, if you think about it, if I was to ask you what is 56 less than 60, I hope you would tell me 4. Did you write or think 60 minus 56? Or did you think 56 minus the 50, uh, 60? to put the square first and then subtract the 56 from that. So we will have n squared minus 56. Now we have an n squared term, we have an n term, and we have a constant. We need to rewrite this problem. It is a quadratic polynomial. I will again have the zero on my left side. The reason I usually uh, have have had these on the left side is because I like for the n squared or x squared term to be positive. Factoring can be a little difficult if the x squared or your n squared is a negative term. So I usually move things so that my n squared remains positive. This will become n squared, but the n term, which is on the left, will be moved so it will become a negative n. And then we still have the negative 56 on the right side. It does not change. Can you factor this problem? That will be n, I believe, a negative 8, and n with a plus 7. Now again, we write each one of these equal to 0. So n is an 8, or n is a plus 7, is a negative 7, excuse me. Equals negative 7. Now let's check this out. We said that our number equals n squared, its own self squared, minus 56. Well, let's try 8. n equals 8 means that we'll have 8 here with 64 minus 56. Is that true? Sure, that's true. All right, let's try it again. n equals n squared minus 56, but this time n equals a negative 7. We have our negative 7 here equals. Now, negative 7 times another negative 7 does give you a positive 49. Is 49 subtract 56 equal to negative 7? Yes. So this is true. In math, you'll find that we're always trying to find what is true. Math is very logical, and it's always looking for what is true. Or most of the time, anyway. All right, let's try the second problem now. It's right here. Find two consecutive odd integers. Now, we did study consecutive odd integers in an earlier lesson. If I let one of the integers be n, well, let's call it m, so we don't have the same letter. Then the second one would have to be m plus 2. Now, I know that says odd, but if m is your first odd number, then your second odd number will be 2 more than that one. If I say 5, don't I have to add 2 to go to 7? Or if I say 7, don't I have to add 2 to get to 9? Yes, the odd consecutive integers go up by 2 every time. So here are two consecutive odd integers, m and m plus 2. Find two consecutive odd integers. Well, I made a mistake. Find two consecutive, the square. That's what I forgot. Find square, the squares of two consecutive odd integers whose sum is 130. Sorry for the typo there. All right, we want to square each of these. m squared plus 
m plus 2 squared. Now be sure you use parentheses. It equals 130. I'm going to erase this, get this a little bit out of the way. Uh, all right. Now, we've got a lot of work to do here. I hope you remember how to square a binomial. If not, write it twice. This is not just two terms. If you think that's just m squared plus 4, you have forgotten something. You must write that twice. Multiply this out. This will be m squared plus 2m plus another 2m plus 4. And don't forget the first m squared. You thought I had. Alright, so now that we're going to add these together, and do you see that we're going to have another quadratic? I'm going to erase the first problem that we worked, get it out of our way, give us a little more room here. 2m squared plus 4m minus 126. Now, of course, we're going to factor. But did you notice that all these are divisible by 2? If you ever notice that all the terms, all the terms are divisible by a certain number, you can simplify the equation. I'm going to divide all of these by 2. And, of course, 0 divided by 2 is still 0. And now we're going to factor m uh, minus 7 and m plus 9. Did you know those? You may need to stop the video if you don't and figure that out. But hopefully you're pretty good at doing that now. Now I'm writing each factor equal to 0 and I'm going to solve. So m is 7, m is negative 9. But don't forget, we had to find two of these guys. We have the first one. We have m is 7, but what is m plus 2? m plus 2 would be 9. What is 9 times 7? 63. Oh, we're supposed to square these first. Square 7, we get 49. Square the 9, you get 81. What's 49 and 81? It's 130. Do the same thing for the other number that you found. m is a negative 9, then m plus 2 which means we add 2 to negative 9, and we will get negative 7. So if I square these numbers, do I get 130? 9 squared is 81. Negative 9 squared is also 81. 7 squared or negative 7 squared is 49. If I add that, I do get 130. So our answers are correct. And there they are. m equals negative 9 and negative, and uh, our two numbers are negative 9 and negative 7, or positive 7 and positive 9. Now hopefully you'll be able to get through your homework tonight without a bit of trouble. I hope you have learned a little bit today. We've learned to write equations, although there is another lesson on how to write the equations. Today, though, we wrote the equations and then solved the equations and found the numbers or the length and the width of our rectangles.